Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Luis Chavez. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based out of Southern California. And in today's video, I'm going to be taking you along on what it's like to be shooting film for the first time. I don't have a lot of experience with film as you guys know. So I brought along three different cameras to try out to see what kind of fits my style of shooting the most. So I brought a TLR, a 35 millimeter camera and a point and shoot camera. So um, for the next three days, I'm gonna shoot in a couple different places and see uh, what kind of results I get. So to give a little backstory, ever since I started my photography career, it's always been digital cameras. It's never been film cameras, but I've always been inspired and influenced by like the film community here on YouTube. So I've always looked at videos from Matt Day or Joe Greer or Willem Burbeek. So I've always seen those guys uh, shoot around their towns or uh, even do professional work on film. So I've always been really interested to see what that process is like. So when I saw that moment had courses, that especially with uh, Willem Burbeek's course, I wanted to try it out and see if this is something that I could learn. Because if you know me personally, you know that I like to learn as much as possible from anything, especially hobbies or careers that interest me. So film photography just felt like a logical step for me to kind of try out. So um, when I recently went to Big Bear, I brought along these three cameras because I wasn't sure what I want to shoot with. And I learned a lot from Willem's uh, uh, course, just in terms of how to shoot and light all that stuff but i wanted to just try out different cameras because i wanted to make sure that the camera that i picked would be the camera that i kept um, because all these cameras seemed um, very different in shooting styles so the first camera i tried was this tlr it's a yashica mat that i've had for a long time i initially thought it was broken and might it might still be um because uh, I just got it for like 30 bucks at like um, a thrift store many, many years ago. So I bought it and I thought, oh, this would be a great just as a, a, a decoration on my shelf or something. But I recently uh, developed a roll through here and it looked OK. So I brought this along. So um, just the look of the camera is really awesome. Uh, but for the type of shooting that I do, it's kind of clunky. Um, to bring along like on a family trip for me. Uh, so I had a lot of fun shooting with this and it's it's a great camera and definitely, definitely a format that I've never done before. It's like a square format and the way that you compose and you frame your shot is through a viewfinder here. And so um, it has this really big piece of glass. And so a lot of the stuff that I learned through that uh, lesson was to meter and which was great because this camera doesn't have a meters, but uh, one thing that I do not own is a light meter. So I just metered everything on my phone with the Lux app. Uh, I believe that's what it's called. So the, um, these are some of the photos I got through this camera in Big Bear, California. So the next camera that I bought was this Nikon F3. And uh, I borrowed this from my father-in-law, uh, which I'm super grateful for, but this is a little more familiar to me, uh, the style of camera that I usually use, because it kind of uh, resembles the modern cameras, and I'm sure that's where they get all their design uh, uh, cues from. So this is a lot more familiar to me, even though I did have um, you know, automatic features. Uh, I tried to just use the techniques that I learned and just metered everything through my phone just to kind of get consistent results. Even, so people that might not be familiar with film, if they have an iPhone, they kind of see what kind of results they get. So I was able to borrow this camera with a 50 millimeter lens. And uh, this is an F1.4 lens, but the one that I shot with was an F2. So um, both 50 millimeters. So I, I really enjoyed shooting with this camera. And I think this is, uh, I, again, a little bit more closer to what I'm familiar with. So here's a few photos I got shooting with the Nikon F3 for the first time.
So the last camera I bought was this Drico GR1. If you're familiar with my channel, you know I've had this for a little bit. So um, this is the most familiar to me because it kind of feels very similar to my uh, Ricoh GR3. So this camera has a lot of really awesome features and it's the easiest one to use because uh, it has a lot of automatic features. So I, for this one, I just put it in program mode and I just shot around, um, uh, which was really, really great because then I didn't have to feel like people had to wait for me. So um, this was definitely the easiest one to shoot. And yeah, the the design of this is awesome. So I, I still plan on making a video just on the Ricoh GR1. So if you want to watch this, uh, please leave me a comment uh, saying that you do. So, but. Yeah, this is a great camera and definitely a, a great point and shoot as well. So this is a few photos I took with the Ricoh GR1 also on a strip in Big Bear. I learned shooting film for the first time is kind of that I take a lot more time trying to compose the shot rather than just shooting more frames and hoping that one turns out. Film kind of forces you or makes you be more mindful of the shots that you take because you know some in some film cameras like the medium format or like the TLR that I had you get 10 to 12 shots in on these little point and shoots you get 37 shots so you have more limited uh, frames that you are kind of work with so you kind of want to get that frame a little bit better than you would with digital and although I really really enjoy uh, taking photos with digital film just has a different quality to it that I can't explain um, the, the photos just feel a lot more uh, timeless to me and uh, it reminds me a lot of the photos that I saw when I was growing up so um, I definitely had a lot of fun shooting film and I still plan on shooting a little bit more film uh, going forward because it's just it's a ton of ton of fun to shoot. So the big drawback for me I guess is just the cost of it. There's no way of going around it. It's a pretty expensive hobby or even if you're doing it for uh, professional work it's pretty costly to get these developed but luckily there's a lot of tons of different options so if you want to buy film online there's tons of different retailers. A moment actually just started uh, selling film stuff on their website. So if you want an all-in-one place, uh, which is the same place I got the, uh, the lesson from, there's places like that, but you know, there's still local shops that still sell film and develop film around. My town actually has a local lab run by a family, which is awesome because I'm uh, always down to support local businesses. So if you kind of want to save some money, just, um, just uh, look around to see what the different options is around town or in your city or state. But yeah, I think film is definitely uh, uh, gonna stick around for a while and it's definitely gonna stick around in my kit. So thank you so much for watching this week's video. It's probably gonna be the last video I make for 2020. It's been a weird year, but I just wanna thank everybody who subscribed to my channel so far. If you guys have any uh, suggestions of future videos that I should make for 2021, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. So happy holidays and I'll see you next year. Bye.